Good evening, Shiloh, and thank you for joining us for our midweek service. This is our opportunity to stop in during the middle of the week, to kind of slow down, decompress, and to get refreshed and refueled with a word from the Lord. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's a whole lot going on in the world. So Shiloh is that place that you can come to, get recharged, hear a word from the Lord, and that word is going to help carry you through the rest of the week. Again, thank you for joining us. Now, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on at the church, you can follow us on all the social media platforms. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. You can also look at our services on YouTube. So you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with any recordings or special events that the church might have going on. Now, if you stand in need of spiritual support, Shiloh is here to help. You can contact us through our website at shilohbc.org forward slash spiritual support and complete the spiritual support form. Or you can leave your information in the chat and a deacon or minister will contact you. Shiloh is here to help you out on your spiritual journey in whatever way that we can. Now Shiloh, it is offering time and opportunity for you to give back a portion of what the Lord has blessed you with. So let us stand in recognition of the consecration of tithes and offerings. Dear Father, may thy love abound toward us as we now bring to thine altar this, our gifts. Help us that we may not give our money as a necessity, nor grudgingly, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. We ask thy blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you can view the four ways of giving on the screen. You can text GIVE to 301-321-8801. You can go to our website at shilohbc.org forward slash GIVE. You can use the F1 Go app. Or you can mail in or drop off your tithes, your offerings, your gifts at the church. And if you have any questions about your giving, then you can email contributions at shilohbc.org. Now Shiloh, our guests, our visitors, and our friends, you are in for a mighty preached word this evening. So after the musical selection, you will hear a word from one of our very own ministers of the gospel. Praise is to our 
give honor to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to my pastor, the Reverend B. Lewis Collington, to my wife, and to my brothers and my, my sisters in Christ Jesus. It's good to be in the house of God just one more time. I'm thankful to my pastor for this opportunity that he has given unto me to stand one more time upon the preacher's wall and share the word of God to God's people. Amen. If you would, could you please turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 8, and we're going to focus our attention on verses 15 through 20. 15 through 20, 20 and I'm reading from the King James Version. That's Jeremiah chapter 8. Verses 15 through 20, and while we're turning there, may we go to God in prayer. O merciful Father in heaven, I thank you, O God, just for this opportunity that you have given unto me to stand one more time upon the preacher's wall. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 15 through 20, and it reads, And we looked for peace, but no peace came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. In the snorting of, of, his, of his horses was heard of, of, from Dan. The whole land trembled at, at the sound of, of the narrowing of, of his strong ones. For they are come and have uh, devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrice, among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, says the Lord. When I, when I would co comfort uh, myself, against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughters of my people because of them that dwell in the far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger? with their grieving images and with strange vanity. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. And I would like to leave with you <clears throat> tonight. I thought I had more time. I thought I had more time. Brothers and sisters, Time is something you can't waste. Either way you take it, if you die or if Jesus suddenly come. But I'm here to tell you tonight, this world is not your home. But either way, you don't have much time. So as I, so as I listen to the, the, the news, and look at different events uh, in the world today, I realize that the statement uh, many people will be caught up saying, I thought I had more time. In James chapter 4, verse uh, 13 through 15, it says, go, go to now ye that say today or tomorrow will we go into such a city. And continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. 
Whereas we ye know not uh, what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that uh, appears uh, for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live or do this or do that. I, I thought I had more time. All those dishes that you're keeping in the cabinet, you better take them out because you got, not, you got nothing but a little time. All, all that fancy linen uh, you won't pick or, or pick on the put on the bed, uh, you better enjoy them because you ain't got much time. And so many people think, well, I, I, I'm still uh, I'm still young. I, I got a lot of time to get saved. Uh, but you don't know, beloved. You you don't know. Now is the time to take care of business. Now is the time to get things straight. In our text tonight, uh, we find Jeremiah, known as a weeping prophet, because he weeps oh, for the wrongdoing of his people. Uh, we find Jeremiah called to deliver the word of God uh, to a dying world. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I want you to ask my people, what's wrong? I have you found in me? What wrong have you found in me? And shallow, hear me tonight. I, I want to ask that same question tonight. What wrong have you found in God? But, but, but before you answer, let me tell you uh, what I think. Listen, my people, uh, uh, my, most people uh, in the street have nothing against God. Uh, some of them, they, they, they just don't like church. Hear me now. Say, so, so they ask the question, uh, should I go to church and, and risk the possibility of someone in church pointing out that I had a ba baby uh, when I was young and, and not yet married? Uh, should I go to church to, uh, and risk the possibility of somebody in the church talking about the fact that, uh, um, that I messed up and slipped around on my wife? Uh, should I go over there uh, where, uh, where church folk and I know my, my business and, and who knows my business and can't handle uh, my humanity? You, you, you work hard to keep your marriage together uh, and the harder you work to keep it together, the further it falls apart. And sometimes my wife and I, uh, when, we, when we are washing clothes, uh, we would put uh, the color clothes uh, in one pile and the white clothes in another pile. We would keep the, the, them separated. And I want to tell somebody tonight, when Jesus uh, went to Calvary, uh, in his mind, I, I can imagine him saying, whosoever will, let him come. You don't have to separate them. You, you can put the pimps, hear me now, you can put the pimps uh, in with the preacher. You can put the GED in with the PhD. You can, you can put those from, from Penn State with those from State Penn. You can put those on Capitol Hill with those on Blueberry Hill. Uh, it's washing time. And the, uh, those that got the, the bankroll and those that feel like they got it going on. They got it uh, cracking and they got it lacking and put them in the wash. Those young boys and homies uh, in the hood, uh, they're still wearing their clothes low. Put them in the wash. Uh, uh, Pookie and Ray Ray and T-Bone, put them in the wash. The crowd that can, can, just can't, that can, can make crack but can't pass chemistry, put them in the wash. That crowd that keeps saying to, to, to the left, to the left, to the left, put them in the, the wash. Put, put them all in there together because it's washing time. Amen. And what Jesus is washing with will wash all sins away. And so now we find that God has a reputation for defending his people. 
You see, it's not normal uh, for the people of God to lose battles. Now, I, I, now real Israel was losing. Uh, instead, they, they will go back to God and say, what's happening? Uh, beloved, when God uh, is on your side, you suppose to win, whether there be many or few. Uh, it makes no difference, beloved. God is mighty for mighty for His people to lose. To God is God is too mighty for His people to lose a battle. God has a reputation for fighting for His people, and that's why uh, He would tell them, "No weapon formed against ye shall prosper." And that's why He told them, "The battle is not yours, uh, uh, but the Lord." And that's why He told them. I know the, the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts of, of peace and, and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. And he said, be still and know that I am God. He said there that these enemies you shall see no more. You see, beloved, you see, saints are not supposed to lose a battle. Brothers and sisters, uh, you ought to take the Lord with you wherever you go. In shallow, something is wrong uh, when the people of God start, start losing. And there is one thing that, that would uh, cause a child of God to fail. And that is to be out of the will of God. Or to, to, to be uh, disobedient uh, to something he told you to do. Uh, the battle still belongs to God, beloved. But, but, but what have uh, happened now is that we, uh, that we hope that we have lost something. We have lost something. We have lost uh, that seeking spirit that we used to have. Uh, when things went bad, we, we would go to God and, and say, Lord, oh, what's wrong? And that's not the way it is now, beloved. We want to be successful, uh, but not saved. Uh, people today have been carried away with their own beauty. And, and, and now we focus on how we can be better and smarter and better looking and, 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 and more prosperous. But nobody is saying nothing about uh, uh, being holy. And I need some help up in here. Uh, we lost the call of God, uh, but the Lord sent me here tonight to tell somebody. Without God, you can do nothing. My brothers and sisters, uh, we need to put uh, away lifeless religion. Put away false idols. Put away all the exception of fl the flesh. And somewhere along the way, we, we, have, we have rejected Jesus uh, uh, in exchange for responsibility. Uh, but not here as shallow. We have rejected Jesus. And so our church could be a spark, sparky clean and, and safe and middle class and respectable and acceptable. We have rejected Jesus uh, in favor of, uh, of a bend. Hey, glory to God and a Bentley. But somewhere along the way, a lot of us got important. A lot of us can't make up our mind whether we want to go to Hollywood or Calvary. And so uh, we no longer hunger and thirst after righteousness, but not here as shallow. Brothers and sisters, a, a, a delated gospel, delated gospel is no gospel at all. But it's time now for preachers to stand up now and stop being popular and start and start being prophetic. There was a time, beloved, when the church uh, was called the church. Uh, but now we are backsliding and turning against the truth of God's word, but not here as shallow. 
In our text tonight, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 17, it says, I will send serpents and, and cockatrials among you. You see, it's God's will, beloved, uh, for us to turn around before it's too late because uh, of his goodness. Do you know God is good? Uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 4 says, uh, the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. What, what that means, beloved, is that God uh, wants to be so good to you that he shame you into repentance. Hear me now. You would say to yourself, I, I got to do better than this. You see, beloved, uh, when you look back over your life, you have to admit God has been better to you than you've been to yourself. And life may have been rough, but you're still alive because God wants to show you. And there are some people you could live without, you could live without them and still be here. Y'all don't hear me tonight. There uh, was a job. There was a job you, you thought you couldn't live without, but you got laid off, but you still, but, but you still paid all your bills. There was a sister or a brother, listen to me tonight, you thought you could, would lose your mind if that man or that woman walked out on you. But they walked away and God rocked uh, you to sleep every night. And after all, uh, after all uh, what I've been through. But I'm still here. You could have been dead in your grave. But you're still here. And after all the nights uh, you cried. Uh, after all the liquor you drank. And after all the blunts you smoked. After all the coke that you snorted, after all the heroin you used, after all the pipes you hit, after all the unsaved sex you had, after all the nights you didn't know how, how in the world uh, you uh, got home, you just found your car pointed in the driveway or going the right way. You're still here and you're, and you're in your right mind. Not only that, beloved, but you got a joy in your heart. You got praise uh, on your lips. Uh, uh, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And I believe God wants to, to, to bless you so mightily. That's when you look at your life and look at how you've been how he's been good to you. He brought you through the fire. He brought you through the flood. He brought you through the trials. He brought you through the tribulation. Nobody but God. Listen, listen. If, if the goodness of God would, would, would not cause you to turn to him. And I believe God will do whatever it takes. To see you saved before you die or before the Lord returns. In our text in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20. It says the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And, and, and we are not saved. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. It sounds so final beloved. It sounds like, uh, like this, is, this, this is it. Beloved, can, can, uh, can I tell you something? God will do what, whatever he can do to have you in, in the harvest. He, he said, I'm going to try a goodness to get you saved. I, I will bless you even when you're not worthy to be blessed. I will bless you when you don't even look, uh, don't, you don't even seek me. Hear me now. I will bless you even when you don't uh, even want me. I will bless you even when you, you uh, won't bless uh, uh, me. 
I will bless you. Uh, uh, I will bless you not because uh, I'm uh, pleased with you, but I'm happy. I'm hoping that someday before it's not before it's too late. I thought I had more time. I, I, in our text in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 16, it, it talks about the, the snorting uh, of the horses uh, and their hoof beat uh, of the invading of the army because God was trying to get their attention. And I need to tell somebody who's listening to me tonight, I, I believe God will send something to get your attention. It, it, before I let you uh, 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 to be a, a, a zero, hey man, before I let you even be a zero, I'll send the cockatrice, a two-legged dragon, and serpent, they will bite you. God said uh, you will not be able uh, to charm them with all your charm. You will not be able to stop them. And I will send trouble that you can't cry out. I will send trouble that you can't drink out. I will send trouble uh, that you can't shout out. I will send trouble that you can't jump out. I will send trouble that you can't dance out. I will send trouble that you can't even praise your way out. And because you wouldn't pay me any attention, you wouldn't help me to save you when I was blessing you. Y'all don't hear me tonight. I'll send storms. I'll send crises. I'll send a heartache. I'll send trouble. I'll trouble your way. That I that. I really wanted, because I really wanted to bless you, because I love you. I love you. God says I love you too much to give you up. Hear me now. Whatever it takes, beloved, to get your attention, tell somebody you don't have but a little time. Listen, listen, you can't take your time, you can't, you can't take your time with God. God is serious about you. Before you embrace me, God will sting you with the cockatrice, the dragon. And tell me, have you ever had uh, trouble uh, uh, you uh, couldn't work out? You thought you could uh, figure it out? You thought you, uh, your, your little tricks uh, and schemes could help. But God says, no, no, no. You see, if, you, if it's the devil, you, you can rebuke him. But when it's God's judgment, God's judgment cannot be charmed. Y'all don't hear me. You would find yourself saying, I thought I had more time. Baby, uh, uh, the Bible says in, in, Ephes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, when uh, we are uh, unkind, when we are uh, unforgiven, when we are bitter, when we are angry, amen, when we have nasty attitudes, when we are, has, that we slander people, you are grieving, hear me now, the Holy Spirit. There is a difference, hear me now, between grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit by what we do to him. We quench the Holy Spirit by what we refuse to let him do through us. God said, uh, uh, it grieves me that I've been so good to you. And this is what I, I, I get in return. I, I stopped the car from killing you. I brought you through your sickness. I took care of you when you were in the hospital. I brought you through your, your trauma and your drama. 
I, I keep you in, in your right mind and, and you uh, won't even acknowledge me. You, you live like you, you, you don't even know me. Huh? You, you serve in ministry and you're still shaking up. You serve in ministry and you're still committing adultery. God says it, it grieves me that I heal your body. And you say to yourself, I thought I had more time. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father in heaven, I thank you, O oh God, for all your blessings, God, for this word that went forth to your people. I pray, Father God, that they received your word tonight. And Lord, we give you praise tonight and glory, thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. There may be someone that heard this word tonight. I thought I had more time. And I'm telling you tonight that Jesus is coming. And the Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I beseech you to accept Jesus Christ. Get your life right. Get back in church. If you're not in church, walk that walk that Christ wants you to walk. And he will be pleased with you. May God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Thank you for joining us for our midweek service. We pray the message you just heard will bless you in a mighty way. Please share our Shiloh Baptist Church YouTube channel link with all of your family and friends so they can be blessed as well. Now you have the opportunity to bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse as God has asked faithful believers to do. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Join us each Sunday at Shiloh for Sunday school at 9 a.m. and Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. We would love for you to join us in person. If that is not an option for you, you can participate virtually as well. Then join us virtually each Wednesday for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with a focus on saving souls. Remember that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 tells us, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Until we meet again, always be blessed.